Hi, I'm Tom Hollingsworth. Welcome to Networking Field Day. We're here in Mountain View, California at the offices of VeloCloud. The presentation that you are about to watch features VeloCloud's products and solutions and a group of networking community delegates who are invited to ask questions, make comments, and offer their opinions in front of a recorded video. If you would like to learn more about this and other exciting topics, including how to become a delegate or a presenter at the event, please go to our website at techfieldday.com. If you'd like to watch more videos about this and other exciting technology topics, please see our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash techfieldday. So I'll be covering some of the, <coughs> the service provider case studies here. Uh, the first, uh, Steve touched on a lot of the benefits, so I won't go down that path. Uh, I think we are going to focus more on the technical deep dive of the two uh, dominant case studies that we have seen. Uh, so this uh, case study is about a tier one service provider. So as you see, the components are the same. There's an edge, gateway, and the orchestrator. The key thing here is it's a very deep, tight integration, right? With a tier one service provider, although we have all the bells and whistles in the product, maybe they just want to use some parts of it. So do we have the technologies in the product that can enable us tier one service provider deployment? And the answer is yes. So it starts from the left. There is a Edge VNF. It's a virtual software that can sit on a virtual CPE. Some SPs call it a universal CPE. It's completely virtual. It can sit on any x86 hardware. The second component is the orchestrator. As you see, the orchestrator, we, the key component here is the REST APIs and the SDK. We run SCEP with a third party CA. A while back, I said we have integrated CA on the security slide, but we can also interoperate with third party CAs. And with a deeper integration with a tier one SPs, that is really important. We can get the certs, we can do a secure provisioning of the VNF. The entire workflow is through APIs and SDK. We have a very good demo coming up with Earthlink uh, online where we'll demonstrate the API capability. So I won't go detail into that. There is the gateway component. From the edge, we can build an interoperable IPsec tunnel to an existing WIG, some, custom, some SPs call it a virtual internet gateway, some SPs call it a secure internet gateway, but it can build a secure tunnel, IPsec tunnel with IQV2 with their existing gateways. And then within that, we can have a tunnel coming all the way to the partner gateway. So again, the key here is we fit into the SP world perfectly because there are a set of technologies that we have built that enables us to do that, more around interoperability. So yes, interoperable on the routing, it's interoperable with SDK and the APIs, it's uh, VM ready, KVM, VMware, a bunch of hypervisors that we support. And the gateway is also all virtual in their network. We talk BGP with the PE routers, and we can provision the SD-WAN site with the non-SD-WAN information. So which is really good here. From an SP perspective, they can deploy branches on site without installing anything in the data center. Because what I've seen in past, you do complete over the top, it uh, lands you up in a very lengthy uh, timeline in terms of when, when you try to insert a box in a DC, we all know how complex it could be, how long it could take. An SP could start with this solution, no on-premise DC uh, hub or edge uh, requirement, and the non-SD-WAN domain can be bridged with the SD-WAN domain. So very, very good for tier one service providers. One of the other benefits with SPs is they can now start offering platinum SD-WAN services with internet only. In past, you go complete over the top from a branch to a DC and start using internet links, you will face mid-mile issues. By having the cloud gateway in the SP core, as you move that functionality, you get both last mile and mid-mile benefits. Because now you hop onto the SP's mid-mile, get the reliable delivery, have internet on your sites, get the last mile optimization. It's best of both worlds. So it's a really good uh, grounds up built solution for SPs because it's multi-tenant both for the orchestrator and the gateways. This gateway that sits out here is not a virtual edge. The people mistake that often. They'll say, oh, this is a virtual software. You just have that virtual edge sitting out there. No, this is a different software. It's a multi-tenant software, it's stateless. So very, very a different component from a SD-WAN perspective. Now, uh, this is a tier two use case. Same three components. Now the edge device from VeloCloud, it's x86. 
we'll be demonstrating you can have multiple virtual services on that box because now they don't want to build their own virtual CPE or universal CPE. They want plug and play blocks. So they'll get one of our boxes and deploy virtual services on it. A well-known third-party firewall, VNF, is a good example of that. So on the edge side, you get a box from us. Same gateway, but now the IPsec is built in here. So now you can get the benefits of the overlay and IPsec from a single component. So you don't need a separate appliance as the tier one use case. And on top of it, the orchestrator itself, we provide a service. So a lot of the tier twos that have started with VeloCloud, they use a hosted orchestrator service from VeloCloud. They don't host it themselves. And that's a huge benefit. You don't need to, because they are already picking this up from a deployment perspective. So for an early time to market reason, you can use VeloCloud hosted gateway, or, uh, orchestrator. And most SPs, I would say, have gone down this path. Now, are they using the, uh, the hosted gateway directly, like using that interface that you provide as a multi-tenant interface, or are they calling on the APIs and integrating the functionality into their own provisioning systems? We have both of these models. Both the models exist. Right. So in one of the models with a tier one, they'll take our gateway, the orchestrator is theirs. Uh, from an orchestrator perspective, the management plane, we have seen two use cases. One is SPs take the orchestrator, take it in their core, and it looks like their dashboard. It ties with REST API SDKs. There is this use case wherein it's a VeloCloud hosted, but it looks like a tier two SP branded portal, and we'll do the branding for them. Mm. Even the edge can be branded. So you will have tier two SPs, and you, they will ship our box, and it's just branded, and it has their branded logo on it. So very good in terms of flexible in terms of the branding options. And then once they once this service is stood up as an SP, are they selling it, bundling it as a, as a value add to their existing customers, or is this they're just trying to improve performance with what they've got? No, they they again there are two main there are a couple of different use cases. If I look at a tier, if I look at a UCAS player, right, like a Vonage or a Mattel, or a, you know, they they will sell it with their voice service. They call it smart voice. So they'll say, okay, for voice, only traffic that I'm concerned about is voice because I host Broadsoft in the cloud. So in that use case, they'll take these gateways, put it in their core next, next to the SBC, we certify for Broadsoft, and they deliver it for that use case. There is a tier one use case wherein they'll use it for data and voice. So all the segments are coming to the VeloCloud Edge and we'll handle both voice, video, internet. We call it as a triple play. Mm. So as you see, we have segmentation support. So they'll have typically voice, internet, and data as a triple play service. They'll bundle these together, and they'll go to a customer and say, you sign up for it. You can sign up for a triple play, you can sign up for a double, double play, or you can get the voice only. And these are all different segments that are carried from the branch to the cloud gateway. And the end customer may have no idea there's SD-WAN involved. Uh, yeah, again, it depends. Some SPs now, because SD-WAN is a big word, yeah. some SPs will brand it as SD-WAN. We have a SP that they'll call it a smart voice. There is a SP that will call it something else. So we have seen both sides. But typically, we have seen they will try to latch with the SD-WAN uh, keyword. Now, like I described, something very unique to us is the gateway itself. And it is not a virtual edge. It is multi-tenant, multi-segment. It's one plus one is three. People talk about segmentation and then they say, oh, you know, I have segmentation, that means I am multi-tenant. No, it has to be multi-tenant and within each tenant you need to have segments, right? And that's what I call is ready for SP deployment. This component is a virtual software, it's virtual instance in the SP's core. Now, it is also stateless. The reason I say it's not the same as branch, it doesn't run firewall. It has no idea about the branch, in fact. The policies are synced from the branch to the gateway. It's a very important concept. It's a stateless piece of software that goes in the SP core, and that's why SPs love it. Because now if you see that if the gateway fails, and I hop to the next gateway, the policy is synced. You're, there is no additional configuration needed. I can really stand up a new gateway, and it has no information about anything in the world. The policy will be synced from the branch to the gateway itself, stateless. And that's one of the reasons all these SPs, whether it's tier two SPs, tier one SPs, cloud service providers, UCAS, all of these will take this stateless component, have it in their network. It's so easy to spin up a gateway. Now, covering a bit of uh, tier, uh, tier one use case, 
and, and some tier twos fall into this bucket as well. And primarily focused on large enterprise. If you look at it in a way, this is the key value large enterprises get. What do light, large enterprises have in common? Like outside of the retail, which may be North America, a lot of large enterprises are distributed, right? They'll have an office here, office there, and there's mid-mile issue. You cannot use internet for that, right? And SPs, and the other problem we hear is, oh, well, look, you know, I've spoken to a large enterprise customer, and they'll say, hey, you know, all these circuits, bring your own broadband, who's going to manage all this? And we're like, we're not going to manage it. That's the value of the SP, right? Managed service provider, key use case. So, so many deployments, over 60% of the market of VAN is managed service provider. And here you see there's a North America zone, APAC zone, reliable mid-mile core, distributed cloud gateways. If you are in the same zone with the partner gateway, you don't even need BGP. Our overlay is taking care of all of that. And that's why we are deployed in so many tier one SPs. If a branch A talks to branch B in North America, for instance, and if there were two cloud gateways, it's an example, there are multiple cloud gateways uh, with a tier one SP. But between that, there is no complex routing to configure from the branch perspective. If a branch A talks to B, we, can, we all also have things like path affinity, which is programmability. When we started talking to SPs, one of the challenges they had is, hey, I often run into this asymmetric routing is issues. How do I avoid that? We honor, like if I go from A to gateway one to B, B will send it back to gateway one to A. If B sends it to gateway two to A, the A will send the reverse traffic back to gateway two, back to B. We understand the overlay protocol itself. We are going to ensure that the path is symmetric. Very important, this whole path affinity. These are some of the key reasons, bells and whistles in the product, why SPs uh, really deploy the, us in their core. Now when you cross the zones, like I said, it's a large enterprise use case. You're crossing the zone. I don't want to use internet. I want a reliable mid-mile backbone. MPLS is there to stay. And that's where our gateways are going to talk BGP with the PE routers. We program the edges, SD-WAN sites, with the non-SD-WAN info, with, the si with other sites in a different zone, get programmed over BGP. And we make sure that a, a reliable mid-mile core is used for any site-to-site uh, tra site -site traffic between two zones. But it's very, very easy to configure on our UI. Some aspects of programmability that we'll discuss here. The support for local prep, med, we've heard of all of that. Uh, the support for communities uh, from a BGP perspective. But really, a lot of the times when we started working with SPs, they said, hey, you know, there are often misconfigurations in my network. And I, I don't know how to troubleshoot them. I, get, I send a packet one way, and it comes back the other way. How do I make sure that this whole path affinity works across the board? And we had to do, we had to do a lot of SD-WAN programmability at, from that perspective. So for instance, in this case, customer says, if a branch one sends the traffic out, I want to pick gateway one. All they do is, this gateway one is in their core. They configure a, a, a higher, or they want to pick gateway two in this case. They configure a higher local pref on gateway, and they configure a lower local pref on the, on the other gateway. And now, all of a sudden, the branch gets programmed with that information. Even though BGP is not running on the branch in that use case, the programmability happens from the gateway down to the branch office. So when the outbound traffic is initiated, the branch will send the traffic to gateway two, and now we need to ensure that, hey, the traffic comes back to gateway two. What if the traffic comes back to gateway one? So for that, we inject a lower med. We lo inject a lower med automatically. We don't tell SPs to configure it. And SPs love this. Although as small as it sounds, we want to make sure it is easy to deploy, easy to configure. So you inject a higher local pref, we inject a lower med. If you don't honor med, we also have support for communities. So you can tag with communities and make sure the reverse traffic is coming back the same way. This is another use case of med. SP, some SP say, hey, you know what? I don't even want to configure local prep. I want you guys to decide which gateway is being selected. All you do is go on the profile, put gateway one on the top, put gateway two on the bottom. We will make sure that the outbound traffic goes to gateway one. We will make sure that from gateway one to the core, a lower med is injected without any configuration. No configuration needed. No question about uh, manual errors here. <coughs> can you do all this manually? Yes, that has happened, right? I mean, you can do all this. Anything can be done manually. But the, the point is programmability here. 
the routing ties with programmability. This was another issue with one of the SPs that we were working with. And that was the use case I discussed. Packets coming one way and packets started going out some other way. We said gateway one, he had a misconfiguration on his end. He had a local pref which sent down the traffic back through gateway two. And we said, okay, what do we do? You already told us, if I rely on BGP, you told me using local pref that use gateway one. I used gateway one. You did a misconfiguration. You started sending the traffic back through gateway two. We will adapt to what SP is trying to tell us. So we'll, again, the path affinity feature will kick in. And we will make sure that the return path comes back on the same path. So if we see packets down the gateway two, we will flip the path. We are going to flip the path. We are going to make sure we honor what the SP wants us to do in that case. So again, programmability. This was reducing the, this was adapting to what SPs are trying to tell us to maintain the path symmetry. So reducing the configurability, making sure the adaptive, uh, you know, it's adaptive in nature is something that SD-WAN should bring in. Is that a near instantaneous detection? Yes, we instantaneously detect because we are building active-active overlay tunnels. So for us to detect that it's coming back a wrong path, we instantaneously detect it and we flip it on. And most SPs have enabled this. I can't name a single SP who has not enabled it because they said, this is exactly <laughs> my problem. You know, I, I, I spent hours troubleshooting my network just to figure this out. So do you, um, is this really easy to configure within the interface, right? So if you've deployed a, a gateway inside of your data center and you have multiple paths, you know, if, whether you're using the provider based or, a, you know, a hub based inside the data center, um, you know, this, this gets really complicated, you know, in WAN architecture today to try to solve this problem. Um, and it sounds like you've got a great solution, but is it easy for the user to actually configure? Absolutely. And that's why we made sure everything is UI driven. You know, there's no CLIs. And that's done with a purpose because it's a custom purpose built solution. The minute a customer needs a feature, they ask us, we deliver it, right? So we, we stick to our promise. You will go on our tool and like Steve mentioned, ICOM, installation, configuration, operation, and management. It's not just about zero touch, it's the entire experience, right? So it's very, very easy to configure on the UI. And some of, some of these use cases, it's actually operator handle. And although it's for operators, we want to make sure it's easy to configure. Some, you know, back then people told us, hey, it's operator, right? SP can use CLIs, just do it using CLIs. We said, no, you know, we want to build, we are building something grounds up, we are going to stick to uh, UI. Did you get some resistance for that at No, first? absolutely not. People no. like SPs love it. Like all this, uh, the, the issue with the CLIs is you give more and more, more and more error prone. You give me a use case, we'll make sure it works. How long is that feature turnaround? So say you want something that's not there. How long does it usually take to? It depends on the size of the feature, right? I mean, we, we, good thing is we are seeing commonality because we deal with mid to large enterprise customers. We deal with SPs. It's not like we hear different features from different customers. By having this common bucket of people, we, make, we get consistent requests. So it, it's pretty quick, I would say. I mean, based on the size of feature.